All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on another episode of 30 Second Tech Tips. Um, my name is Robert Geller, and I work for Instant Tech. Um, we help small businesses in New York City and, and, and uh, across the country uh, with their IT support and Google Ops uh, needs, migrations, uh, training, support, and customization. Um, so if you need any help, please email us at the address below uh, or give me a call directly at 703-957-0040. So um, today's tip is going to be about how to bring all your email accounts into one place, which is Gmail. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but Gmail actually has a great um, feature which lets you pull in other email accounts um, so that this is a great way to centralize all of your email, put it in one place, and not have to check multiple email accounts every day. So without further ado, let's uh, get into the tech tip. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go up here. You're going to obviously log into Gmail, Google Ops, whatever you use. You're going to go up here and click on the gear icon. Click on the gear. Click on settings. Now you're going to see all these tabs at the top here. Now you're going to want to click on the accounts tab. So click on that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to see this down here. It says check mail from other accounts using POP3. Uh, what you're going to do is click on add a POP3 mail account you own. And here it's going to ask you uh, to add that uh, email account. So let's say I'm going to add my personal address, robert.geller at gmail.com. And then it's going to try and guess, as you can see, what the server is. Now it sees that the domain name is Gmail, so it's going to accurately say that the correct POP server is um, pop.gmail.com. Now, if you're pulling in other addresses, let's say, you know, a totally different uh, mail provider, um, you're going to actually need to type in this information. You won't, you will not see a drop down. You'll see a text box where you need to put um, the pop server information there. Um, so once you're done with that, configuring the pop server, and by the way, you get that information from your mail provider. So um, just call them or look at their website. A lot of times they publish this in the control panel um, behind the scenes or even in their FAQs. Um, so you're going to get that information. You're going to make sure that the username is correct according to what they give you. Uh, the password is correct. And then here are some options that you'll want to consider. Um, this option is leave a copy of retrieve message on the server that basically tells the pop server up here hey you know we're not taking the message down to to gmail to this account we're going to leave it basically we're copying it instead of, of totally taking it away if you check the box again it will just make a copy and put it into gmail if you do not check the box it'll actually basically delete the original copy on this on this uh, account. So that may be something you want to consider. Other thing is I recommend secure connections, um, which will depend on whether your mail provider supports that. And then here's a great option I recommend. We want to label each message with a particular custom label. I highly recommend that because that really, if you don't use that, it kind of defeats the purpose of organizing your mail. And if you do use it, it lets you organize all your mail um, according to labels. And we will do another video tech tip on that later. But for now, I recommend, again, leaving this checked. And the default, which is your email that you're pulling from, is usually fine, but you can do whatever you like. You can create a new label uh, at the bottom here. Um, and again, it'll ask for your label name, and you can use that. The other option I don't usually recommend, archive incoming messages. This really doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're using this mail day to day. But this could be good, essentially, if you want to use this account as kind of a backup for this original account. And then you would check that, and instead of seeing the mail come in your inbox, it'll essentially go to your archive, which you can see, which you can see here um, in your original, in this account, um, by searching or um, looking in the all mail section of your, of your uh, Gmail account. So again, those are some options to consider. We're going to basically leave these checked. Uh, these two we're going to label and we're going to do add account. You can see here that this is a common error that you get, especially with other Gmail accounts. It'll say web login required. So you'll essentially need to go to this URL and you'll need to unlock the account. So I'll do that here and show you exactly how that looks. Go to this FAQ. 
So on this FAQ article, you're going to do one of two things, or maybe both, depending. Uh, essentially, um, you need to either go here to display unlock CAPTCHA. Basically, that uh, makes sure Google knows it's you requesting access, again, via that um, adding another account. Or you're going to go down here, and you're going to allow less secure apps access to your account. Now, um, to do the first one, um, you just click on this link. It'll say allow access to your Google account. Click continue. It'll either ask you for a login or if you're already logged in. Uh, recently, it'll say account access enabled. So that's the first uh, problem, and a lot of times that solves it. Uh, if not, go to the next one, which is allowing less secure apps access. And then follow the link over here in this next article to allow less secure apps. Uh, make sure this is checked, and that should be it. And if those two uh, don't solve the problem, there's probably something else going on, but they really should solve that um, error that you get in that window. All right, so now we're going to go back to the add a mail account uh, window, and we're going to finish adding the account. So we're going to click add account, and that's it. So it says your mail account has been added. You can now retrieve mail from this account. Now, here's another option. Would you like to send mail as that other account, which is great. You can really use this one account here um, as both a um, kind of repository for the other email, a centralized place. And you can also make it look like mail that you send from here is actually coming from this other account you're adding, which is great. Um, if you'd like to do that, it's going to walk you through another process. Um, it's essentially going to ask for your name here, uh, your email, whether you like to treat this as an alias, essentially someone, like another one of you, kind of you, um, versus, let's say, your assistant. So um, if this is you, you might want to check yes. Um, there is a help article you can see here that explains more. It's a little tricky and not uh, very straightforward, actually. Um, but if you click the help article, you'll probably understand how that works. Um, click the next step. And essentially, it's going to ask for your SMTP information, which is kind of how you send outgoing mail. Enter that and click Add Account, and that's it. Now, that's um, another uh, sort of process, but it, you do have the option of doing that. Uh, we may cover that in a future tip. Um, but if you have any questions on this part or how to do that even, um, we're happy to answer that in the comments. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope you found this useful and um, we're able to now kind of have a centralized place for all your email. Um, so again, my name is Robert Gallagher with Instant Tech. Uh, we offer IT support and Google Apps training and support and migrations uh, to businesses all around the country. And also, if you enjoyed today's tip, please consider taking a look at our other tips below and also subscribing to our email newsletter. You'll get tech tips in your email inbox several times per week. So thank you so much again and have a wonderful day. Thanks.